Aging and longevity can be very confusing and misleading. On paper, they make perfect sense, but in the real world, when you look at the actual outcomes in humans, then it's a completely different story. So in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the main misleading theories about aging and longevity and how you can avoid them. Do it. The first original theories of aging was the free radical theory of aging, which hypothesized that organisms die because of the accumulation of free radical damage to the cells over time. It's basically wear and tear and all the damage you experience over your entire lifetime is creeping you closer to your death every day. The more damage you're exposed to, the more free radicals and reactive oxygen species you create, which then damages the mitochondria and leaves them more vulnerable, which over time is going to accelerate your aging. Indeed, in some species like yeast and fruit flies, reducing oxidative stress can indeed extend lifespan. However, in roundworms, inhibiting the natural antioxidant superoxide dismutase has been shown to actually increase lifespan, which is counterintuitive. There's no human longevity studies about reactive oxygen species and longevity, but when you look at some of the studies of antioxidant supplementation, then the supplementation of antioxidants like vitamin C, vitamin E and vitamin A haven't failed to show any life extension effects, and in some instances they're actually linked to higher mortality. So you don't want to eliminate all oxidative stress and inflammation, some of it is actually important and it's actually good for you. Hormesis is a universal biological phenomenon found in pretty much all living creatures, and it describes a dose-specific response to a toxin or a stressor that makes the organism stronger than it was before. Exercise, dietary restriction, sauna, dietary polyphenols, coffee, tea, cold, etc., intermittent fasting, they're all forms of hormesis. So, some healthy positive stressors like exercise, intermittent fasting, calorie restriction, and dietary polyphenols or saunas, they can actually have a positive effect on your health and longevity, and the research does support that. Exercise is one of the healthiest things that we know that is associated with longevity and reduced uh, mortality, and the same applies to things like calorie restriction and uh, saunas and different kinds of dietary polyphenols. Of course, too much stress is bad. You can certainly overexercise, you can certainly experience too much stress, you can do too much saunas, you can do anything in excess, and uh, it's the excess stress that is harmful and will accelerate aging. It's just that in moderation, it's actually beneficial. The lack of positive stressors is actually worse for your health and longevity than no stress at all. The second misleading theory about aging is that protein intake speeds up aging because of activating a growth pathway in the body called mTOR or mammalian target of rapamycin. Indeed, mTOR is involved in the process of aging, cancer growth and other malignancies. The problem is that mTOR is involved with the growth of things you need for survival as well, such as muscle cells, brain cells, etc. The theory goes that because protein stimulates mTOR, Eating too much protein is bad for your longevity and it accelerates aging because you're going to keep stimulating mTOR or you're going to raise mTOR too high. But, you know, these studies, they have only been done in other animals. In humans, protein restriction might actually increase the risk of frailty, sarcopenia and overall mortality, especially in the elderly. So even if there was a connection between protein intake directly accelerating aging, then it might be a trap because you're going to potentially die to a hip fracture or something else. The type of amino acids might also be relevant as a lot of the benefits of protein restriction appears to be mediated through methionine restriction. Methionine is one of the main amino acids. For example, rodents fed a methionine restricted diet are up to 45% longer lived than control fed animals. So the issue could be excess methionine that causes too high homocysteine levels or a methane toxicity, but fortunately it has been found that glycine can balance that methionine. Increasing glycine to methionine ratio appears to mimic methionine restriction and alleviates the harmful side effects of excess methionine. Glycine is another amino acid that has been found to have many longevity benefits. But on top of that, protein isn't the only thing that activates mTOR. There's also carbohydrates and insulin that directly activate mTOR. So even if you do think that mTOR is the issue here and you don't want to you know, grow too much, then you should also be eating like a carbohydrate restricted diet at the same time, because carbohydrates will also turn on mTOR, not just the protein. But if the issue is protein, not mTOR, then you can sidestep that and avoid it by balancing your methionine with uh, adequate glycine. Sandwich filled with jellyfish jelly. The third theory is similar to the second one, and it's about IGF-1 or insulin-like growth factor 1 that accelerates aging and gives you cancer. Again, there is some truth to that in animal models, and IGF-1 is involved in cancer development. However, in humans, there is a U-shaped curve between IGF-1 levels and mortality. Low IGF-1 increases the risk of frailty and sarcopenia, whereas too high IGF-1 may promote cancer. 
So as with mTOR, not all mTOR and not all IGF-1 is bad. Some of it is actually good and it can actually reduce your mortality risk. So it's always a matter of balance. It's a trap. The fourth theory is that killing senescent zombie cells is important to slow down aging. Indeed, cell senescence is one of the known hallmarks of aging. However, some of the functions of senescent cells are to also mediate wound healing and embryonic development. With age, you do see an increase in senescent cells and using some nutraceuticals like quercetin or fisetin to eliminate them could be a future therapy that we do use in the elderly. However, you probably don't want to do senescent therapy all the time chronically because you might you know, impair wound healing or you might have some other negative side effects from the positive aspects of senescent cells. So all the senescent cells aren't bad. And as far as I'm uh, concerned or aware of, then there is no way to differentiate between healthy senescent cells and harmful senescent cells. And the last theory is about autophagy being the key to living longer. Autophagy or self-eating is a process by which cells recycle their components like broken mitochondria, the senescent cells, debris, etc. Again, there is some truth in this as autophagy is involved in aging. Many age-related diseases have defective autophagy and with age, autophagy declines. However, autophagy is also involved in some cancers and promoting cancer metastasis. Some bacteria also use autophagy to survive and replicate. So, more autophagy isn't always better and sometimes it can even be harmful. And you don't necessarily need to do a lot of autophagy like there's always autophagy happening during the 24-hour period it just fluctuates at certain periods of the time depending on the physiological stress you do increase autophagy when you exercise you do increase autophagy when you fast you do increase autophagy when you restrict protein and when you restrict carbohydrates and you do increase autophagy when you consume dietary polyphenols so the small hormetic stress is what already gives you some good autophagy and increases it above the baseline you don't need to do like a lot of extended fasting or you don't need to do a lot of very serious dietary restriction or very, you know, very hard stress on your body to activate autophagy. And even then, too much autophagy, like we talk about, can actually be harmful. So it's a matter of balance. Disappointed! So as you can see, aging can certainly be very counterintuitive in a lot of ways and misleading because when you look at, okay, mTOR is the growth pathway, we must suppress mTOR. In, in so doing, we halt aging. I mean, it's certainly true to a certain extent, mTOR is involved in the aging and growth pathways of the body but again if you suppress mTOR too much or if your IG1 levels are too low you might die to a hip fracture prematurely so it's you know <laughs> it's a counterintuitive in a lot of ways and we don't necessarily know how do those theories you know span out in actual human outcomes but here are some of the things that we do know that are important for longevity and healthy aging number one don't get overweight and don't develop metabolic syndrome or diabetes Two, maintain a regular physically active lifestyle that incorporates walking some form of resistance training and cardio. Three, don't overeat calories. Moderate calorie intake is one of the most effective ways to slow down aging. Number four, sleep enough and get at least seven to eight hours. And number five, have a purpose and a sense of meaning in your life, preferably that involves social relationships. But if you do want to slow down aging and live longer and reverse your biological clock, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological age. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.